May 10th meeting of the Fire Station Building Committee. Um, so Blythe sent out the agenda before the meeting. I think everybody probably has a copy, so we'll just go through it here. So first is public comment. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to see anybody raise their hands, Blythe, but. So there's uh, the only people who are here in the meeting is the uh, six of you and, and Andrew from MCTV. So I don't see any public that would want to comment unless okay. any of you have something you'd like to just talk about. I'll open it up to anybody. If anybody has any public comment. All right, seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, so second item, uh, please consider a recommendation for a new committee member. Um, so we have John Kent here with us uh, tonight. Um, John, I appreciate you coming on. I'm assuming that you're still interested in joining the fire station committee. Um, I had a chance to look through your resume at it. again. I don't know if anyone else did, but maybe you can just kind of walk us through why you're, you're still interested in joining. Yeah, so primarily uh, my interest is to be a part of the town. Um, you know, we've, we moved into Norfolk in 2017 and prior to moving here, uh, I was a part of the, a committee in, in uh, Easton and I really valued that time that I spent working on the committee. And I really think that um, any change I can affect or any way I can help out the local you know, place where I live, it would be highly beneficial. As far as experience and all that, I, th I think we've gone through that before, but if there's any questions or if there's anything anyone wants to know anything about, um, I'd be more than happy to speak to it. I think the time I've spent working for the state would be beneficial. From what I understand, uh, this you know project's gonna go through state contracting procedures. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I can help out a lot there. And um, from the sustainability point of view, um, I, I've had a big hand in that as well over the last few years. So, you know, lead and keeping up with the International Energy Conservation Code and all that kind of thing. Um, I'd, I'd love to dive into that however I can. Um, and I see that, uh, are you currently on a town committee? The, I am, yeah. yeah. I'm on the energy committee. Um, yeah, I mean, I, going through your resume again, it was, I think it's pretty impressive. And I think it's a lot of skills that we could, we could use. I, I know Aaron Hunt's not here, but he was very enthusiastic about your sustainability experience. Um, and I think you mentioned it, but it does look like you have some good state work and project management experience. So I'd certainly like to have you on the committee. I don't know how everyone else feels. I would. I, just, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I don't. I don't know if anyone has any comments. Otherwise, we can we can move to to vote to recommend John uh, to the committee. I'm I'm going to look forward to your 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 public contracting experience. Um, <laughs> I, I'm very familiar with it. I know um, our Matt Hafner and and Todd Lindmark are our finance director have taken the MCCPO classes, um, but someone who does it more often than we do, that will be very helpful um, on this project as well, so. So can I have a motion to, to vote to recommend John for appointment? I'll make the motion to recommend John for appointment to the committee. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, we have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, I think it's unanimous. Awesome, so the select board next meet on May 18th. Um, I'm talking to the chair about that tomorrow, but I, uh, I already assumed that we would uh, be making this recommendation. So when I talk to her tomorrow, I'm gonna uh, ask her that we can leave it on there. John, I don't think you need to come. They've already met you. Um, but um, I expect that they could, they'll take up that vote. Okay, great. I, I then, guess I should have. I guess I should have asked. We so we normally meet the second Monday of of each month, John, and I mean, we might meet a little more regularly once or more often when we're selecting the OPM. But I don't know if 
that time slot works for you. Yep, that's perfect. Great. All right. Um, I'll see you at energy committee meetings because we have to work on uh, hiring a consultant to help us with the municipal aggregation project. All right. Yeah. So. Great. Okay. Just stay out of trouble. <laughs> Right. Thanks, John. I'm, I'm sure you can stay on if you want, but it's up to you. So. I'll stick around. Okay. Sit in the back, take notes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so second item, please consider the selection process for the review of OPM proposals and the interview schedule. So advertisement hit the street. Uh, and I think you had the walkthrough on May 5th. I don't know if you want to give us a little background on how things have been going, Clyde? Sure, so it's going very well so far. Uh, as you said, we've had the walkthrough on May 5th. Um, in your packet was the list of the companies that attended, uh, three, six, nine, 11 different companies. Uh, some I'm familiar with, some you all may be familiar with. Um, the, we gave them an overview about the project. Um, we gave uh, tours throughout the whole building talked to them about the different types of studies that have been done already and emphasize the priorities of the project, such as staying on site, you know, not moving the station from where it is, uh, staying on site during construction, um, you know, finding the balance between cost effectiveness, um, needs and wants, um, sustainability. We let them know that we are working on developing a program. Uh, we can't find it from the first study, but working on developing one anyway, because we really want to hit the ground running and be able to move this project along with some, um, some um, urgency, I, I would say, not, not wanting to lose any time that we don't have to. So I thought it went well, both Chief also spoke and Matt did. Um, Chief or Matt, do you have anything you'd like to offer that I didn't cover? Um, <clears throat> we have a lot of applicants that pulled information and we had a lot of interest on Project Dog with the uh, OPM firms. We had over 30 um, and the people that did show up, there was a great pool of uh, potential uh, candidates. I was really impressed with several of them after having conversations. And um, so I'm excited to see their submittals and they all seem very interested and understood um, that we are, you know, this is going to be a, a phase project and they're all really interested in the project. So I'm excited to see how it's going to, uh, who's going to fully apply and uh, do the interview process and get them on board. Chief, anything to add? Yeah, I, I, um, I agree. I think the, it was, uh, you know, the group was, fairly energetic and, and seemed to be enthusiastic. Uh, some were familiar with the, uh, the project from, you know, the previous, um, previous uh, OPM that was supposed to be for the public safety building. Um, some knew a little bit about, about, about the background. Uh, many of them asked, you know, some very, very good questions. And, um, you know, I, I think we have a, a good pool of, of candidates to pull from. Um, I wanted to share that today, um, I did get an email from a DiGiorgio and Associates um, out of Boston. And I'm, I'm not sure that they're, I don't think that they're looking to be OPM, but they want to sit down and discuss the project and ask questions of me and my staff. And I wanted to make sure to share that with you. Their specialty is public safety facility, or there was the gentleman that contacted me, his name's John McKee, is a public safety facility consultant. Um, and I did not respond. I didn't want to take any action on that before I, you know, let everybody know that they reached out to me. And then also I'll forward the email to everyone just so you'll have it as well. Um, but I wasn't, I wasn't really sure how to uh, necessarily handle or respond to that. So I did not, I figured we were meeting tonight, I would bring it up. Um, and I did note that um, in checking that I don't, the gentleman is not on the list of people that attended, nor is the company that he represents represented in the list of uh, companies that were there for the site visit. So um, I'm not sure really what their intention is. It says they're a design and architectural and engineering firm. 
Um, so, I mean, not being present, not being present for the, they had to be present for the site walk to be able to submit a proposal to us for this. Um, if they're interested in being the architect, they're a little early. <laughs> We're not yeah. there yet. Yeah. Um, if they're looking to sell us something else and you're going to get a whole lot of those phone calls over the next <laughs> couple of years. Um, I've got the perfect carpet for you. Um, I want to, yeah. you know, um, we're just going to have to kind of manage those. All right. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to necessarily tell you how to respond, but you could just politely say we're in the process of selecting OPM. You know, we'll bring them on board and figure out what our next steps are. I'd, I'd probably be pretty bland. With okay. it. So. Um, I, the other thing I wanted to tell you was that um, one of the firms, and I forget which one, told me that there's been kind of a pause in new projects out there. So um, that they had better availability of staff because things are finishing up, but they're during the pandemic, communities didn't necessarily start projects. Mm -hmm. So that left me a little more hopeful that private companies might be a little bit more um, uh, willing to negotiate. We'll see, um, I thought I'd mention that. Um, so turning to the process in, in the RFQ, it in refers to this selection procedure. It talks about the types of criteria, the ex experience and qualifications that companies need to have. And it says, once we, they've submitted their qualifications, the selection committee has determined by the the fire station building committee will select a minimum of three finalists firms for interview. The selection committee will then interview the finalists at, at which time they will be asked to detail their qualifications further and provide additional information about their ideas and approach to the project. And then we'll rank them. So I think we need to do, and here comes Aaron. We, my suggestion is we need to really decide two things tonight. One, who uh, among all of us and potentially staff. Hey, Aaron, welcome. Hey, everybody. Sorry I'm late. No worries. Um, do we want to, to actually review those qualifications when they come in? Um, you know, so we could have a potentially 11 sets of documents to read um, or less to, if, if everyone doesn't submit. Um, so do we want everyone on the committee to do it, a, a, a subset of that. Um, I asked Matt to attend the meeting because you know, he's just re you know, somewhat recently been through finishing a project as acting as the OPM. So um, my thought was he has some good experience to bring to it, um, but I open it up to, the, you, know, to you, to Kevin, uh, how, how do we wanna tee this up? I guess, I, you know, before you mentioned having a subcommittee for uh, selection I, or a selection committee, I guess I, I was just under the assumption that we would all kind of be involved in the review and the process since that was one of the charges we were given was to select an OPM. So personally, I feel like we should probably all review them to some degree and all come to a collective decision of, you know, the three or four that we think is are the ones that we want to that we want to meet with. I, I do think we should probably try and pare it down to three or four. I think any more than that, it's going to get kind of unwieldy to, to interview them all. Um, I don't know how anyone else felt, but that, that was my opinion was that I, I kind of felt we should all be involved in reviewing the, the responses. I, I guess I can jump in with a, a thought that um, I, I've been in the other side of this applying to public projects on a number of occasions and there's usually a for lack of a better word a, a report card that's done on the other end by the reviewing parties where you know 8 10 12 however many people there are have a scorecard which i think Blythe would be based largely upon the criteria that's listed at the end of the RFQ mm -hmm. and you know we could just put numbers on it like you know from 1 to 10 how do you think this RFQ meets these criteria and then you take the top three or four scorers and go from there. Um, right, in section seven, it gives the, the, the things to rank them on, for instance, experience, past performance, qualifications, 20 points, 
personnel to be used on the project 40 points and goes up to 100. So you could, you know, if, if all seven of us um, at that point review them all, you know, I'm sure we'll get up, we'll have some numbers that are the same and some are different, hoping that we'll get to the top three or four in an order easily. Yeah, just to kind of piggyback on that, that was one of the, the notes I've written down was that if, does the town have like a scorecard already made from a past project that we could possibly use here? Or should we just all kind of write down our own scores? Uh, I see Matt kind of raising his hand. Yeah. We, do, we do have uh, questions, standard boilerplate questions. You would ask an OPM firm and obviously you'd want to tailor it, but every single firm that's going to be interviewed has to be asked the exact same questions. And, and it's, it's a pretty straightforward process with that, but, um, I, I think the question was, uh, from my understanding, is uh, everybody should be able to potentially see it, all the applicants, but does everybody need to be involved with the process of doing the interviews? So well, I, I think that we're, we're actually start talking about the step beforehand. So I okay. can take the selection, uh, the proposal review, and and make a a chart uh, and make a, a spreadsheet out of it for everybody, and you can each everyone can read them independently score them independently and we, then we can get together and compare that at a meeting and agree on the top four, if you will, if that's the number you want to interview. And assuming you know, the numbers will come out and like-minded people will probably come to some of the similar conclusions. So we'll have a meeting to do that. Everyone had, had time to read them, do their scoring, turn it in, and we talk about it and confirm it. And then we get after that, then we get to what Matt's talking about, which will be interviews with standard questions that we're gonna, and, and how we're gonna run that actual interview process. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I kind of see this as like a two part question. The first part is let's get to the short list. And I think certainly everybody should be involved in that. And, and, and the, that would be this scorecard with the different point values as we see it with the RFQs. The second part is who wants to be involved in the actual interviews where we might have that list of questions that, that Matt has. Um, so I think we're, I guess, is everyone in agreement that we should all review the RFQs? I'm seeing nodding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then it, I think it comes to timing. So, uh, the next steps in the process, I'm just going to calendar in front of me, um, are that by next Tuesday, they, people have to have turned in their questions, uh, if they have any, and so that we can turn around responses, you know, within the next day or so, um, back to them and post those on Project Dog for anyone who wants to look them up. Um, so they can turn around and submit their proposals to us by the 25th. So I guess the next question is when after the 25th, the week of, so May 31st is Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. We had said Wednesday the 2nd when we'd written this, but you know we can change it. Is there a date that week that works for everyone to get together and have and, and go over these. I think uh, if, if we're keeping the seven o'clock time slot, uh, I think Wednesday would work for me the second. How's it look on everyone else's schedule? Yeah, my, my schedule's clear. I should be available for that as well. Don, <laughs> you'll be appointed by then, sir. <laughs> what, what was the, the day and is it 7 p.m.? Wednesday, June Wednesday. 2nd. Yeah. Oh, June, I was looking in May. Uh -huh. Yeah, no problem. I'm good there too, Blythe. Okay, great, thanks, Aaron. Okay, great. Um, and then I think it would be helpful also to for 
making sure we get the firms that we want is to tell them as, as soon as we can what the dates are going to be for interviews um, so that we don't say have someone say, oh, sorry, I, I got to go to the dentist that day. I can't come. You know, at least they have time to change it. Yeah, because the interview, the interviews are tentatively scheduled the week of the 14th, right? So that that's would, what we, that's what we, yep, yeah, that's what we wrote down. Um, well, I, I think that's good because if we notified the top three or four by the end of that week, that gives them over a week to prepare and then have them early the following week. So for those of you in the consulting world, is that enough time? I, I would think a week to prepare for an interview, yes. Not, hope, not the first time they've done this. I doubt it. I hope not. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they typically give us less time to answer, <laughs> you know, answer, answer big questions. So I, now that I'm on the other end, I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, Chris, but you're, yeah, you're yeah. right. <laughs> it's, my, it's my one chance. <laughs> it's, a, it's, an o, it's an OPM interview, too. It's not like they're, you know, yeah. it's not like they're detailing a, a project or something. So I, I think they're they're probably all going to be pretty standard in their responses. I would think. So I then the question up. is: um, so we would have a regular meeting on the fourteenth. That's an option. Um, do we want to do them in the evening? Do we want to take an afternoon into the evening? And you know, four of them. I think you're probably going to want at least four hours. Mm -hmm. For one hour interviews. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I think you're probably splitting it up into two days, then I would think two, two hour slots, maybe. Um, I mean, sorry. if we can. I lost track of what we're talking. Are we in June here? June, yeah. yes. The week of the 14th, Aaron. Right, so just keep in mind the 14th is the last day of school. So it's kind of a. Just something to keep in mind. Oh, that's early this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that 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 week I'm actually I, I am taking a uh, a vacation because that is the last uh, last day of school. I'll be around, but um, evenings are better. Okay. I, I was going to say I don't know how many people want to be involved in the interview process. I mean, I think it would be good if if everybody can be or has the option to be. Mm -hmm. um, and so evenings are probably easiest to do that. Otherwise you're working around people's work meeting schedules, I think. Yeah, I do have a select board meeting on Tuesday night, <clears throat> but other than that, I'm free any other night that week. I mean, we could, <clears throat> we could say, I mean, I, I think if it's in the evening, I'm fairly flexible. So we could maybe Monday and Wednesday to split them up. I don't know if that works for everyone else, the 14th and the 16th. And um, so the other question is, are we doing them live or by Zoom? Um, Matt and I were talking about this and he had the good idea that um, we could probably use the training room on the second floor of the police station. It's huge. Um, and I don't think the mech would be have a you know, wouldn't have anything going on in the evening would give us an area to really be able to spread out ourselves and them um, if you felt like in person was something that was important to do. Yeah, I personally, I would prefer to do it in person if we can, if we have a venue and it sounds like we do. Um, I just, I, I think you get a little better sense speaking with them face to face than over Zoom personally, but I'm now married to the idea. Anybody else have an opinion? Yeah, I, I agree with you that uh, for something like that, you know, the personal experience is, is often better. Okay. Um, so Maybe we book seven to nine o'clock on the 14th and the 16th. Sure. And would you like to have Matt involved? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like he's been through the process before, definitely. 
it's been through the ringer, right, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> Um, perhaps maybe as a non-voting member, but certainly bring some experience that maybe is, uh, could be valuable. Sure, I'm sure he's got some good questions to ask from his, his personal OPM experience. Justin, any thoughts? Does that work for you? Yeah, I'm pretty flexible uh, with the evenings. I was just messaging my wife to let her know what, how the schedule stands. So she works in a uh, biomedical research. So she's busy throughout the day, but evenings are pretty good. Okay. Chief, does that schedule work for you? You're on mute, sir. Yes, it does. I was just entering it into my calendar right here just to make sure I had it. So yeah, that works. That's perfect. I should just let me know, actually, I'm working the 14th, so potentially if everyone else is in person, I could try to be on Zoom if it's not too much of a burden, or I can try to make adjustments to my schedule. I have more than enough time to, to plan ahead. I, I don't I, know what the technological options are in the room with Zoom up there, um, but we can look into that. Yeah, there's like, plenty of time for me to, to, to work something out. Okay. Blythe, are there legal obligations that we're going to have to you know, in person versus conference in, vid in video conference options? Like, are we going to have to offer that option? I, I, I'm talking out loud. I don't know. Um, I mean, I think we have to post a public meeting, but if we can set up Zoom, then we could let the public watch it remotely. I, I'll, I'll look into that. Um, because the, it's the interviews like are public meetings, though. I think they have to be because this is a public body. Um, it's not, there is an exception in the law for interviews of say uh, town administrators or police chiefs to do a screening interview in, in uh, executive session, but I don't think it, it, it wouldn't apply to this. So we we'll just have to um, let me, let Matt and I work on this offline and make sure that we can like in room 124 at town hall, we do have the ability to have people in the room and by Zoom. I'm just not sure what's possible at the uh, at the police station. Matt, any ideas? Um, <clears throat> well, it would be on the MEX network, but they have very fast internet. So, and they have, I don't know how it would be set up, but I'm sure we could have a dummy uh, computer that we could uh, broadcast in the monitors up there. So people can watch and view, but I don't think it would be appropriate for them to be able to weigh in. It would just be a, a listening only. So I don't think we have to have extreme capabilities um, because there wouldn't really be a public comment period for interviews. Yeah. So that's, we'll definitely have to work on that. <clears throat> Blythe, is there a limit on the number of people we can have? In the room, I wonder. There is. It's like fifty percent occupancy, but like I said, it's a huge room. So if there's eight of us and there's five of them, it's still you. I mean, I don't remember how many the room holds, but it's a lot. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to be curious if we had to hold it to like if we need to tell the OPMs, you know, two people max, but it doesn't sound like. That's going to be an issue. Yeah, we'll double check. That's a good point. Um, we would have we have a, uh, a great access control at the police station, so what we would most likely be able to do is just have them sit in the lobby, um, give provide access for them to sit in the lobby, and then we can shuffle them up and down the elevator um, to keep them separated. But I would say on a, on a good day, you could, I, I forget what that um, is classified for as occupancy space. Um, but it uh, don't remember the term, but it can it can hold a significant amount of people. So even with social distancing, I would think twenty wouldn't even be an issue. Yeah, you might have to yell across the room at each other. So it's assembly. It's a it's a it's designed for a assembly space. I believe is the proper terminology. Yeah, it's it's definitely. I think occupancy is up there around a hundred or more. So at fifty percent, we still have plenty of capacity. Uh, Blythe, change the subject. Do, do we actually, I don't see the final RFQ in my email. 
I have um, an almost I, final, I think. I will get it out to you first thing in the morning. <laughs> I thought I sent it out, but I'll, I'll send it again. Maybe I'm missing it. I have a, this is final except for page numbers. Yeah, and the page numbers are definitely on it. <laughs> <laughs> Got that sorted out. Great, so I will make a uh, couple just takeaways. I will make a, a matrix for scoring for everybody for, the, uh, for, for when the proposals come in on the 25th. We will um, work with the MEC to make sure we can have the room, find out what the Zoom options are um, to include everybody. Um, and double check on the maximum in the room, let everybody know, let the, let the uh, as part of the Q and A for the um, candidates, we'll let them know what these dates are so they can plan ahead if they're chosen. Okay. So I'm actually away the week uh, that these come in, but they're coming in electronically. Um, I think what we were gonna do is have Matt send to all of you um, a copy of the electronic Document, Matt, is that the best way to handle these with Project Dog? Yes, yeah, so everybody's going to, because uh, yes, you'd all have to have an account to be able to log into it. So without paying for a million accounts, what I'll do is I'll take all the all the uh, files that have been uploaded and I will, uh, Blake's going to give me the um, email list of who to mail everything to and I will forward them as soon as I get them. It's a little light weekend reading. Memorial Day weekend, you got an extra day to do it, I guess. Actually, no, not, yeah, you do. That's right. <laughs> I'll be in Florida. I see myself doing a lot of reading on Tuesday. It's <laughs> <laughs> good we're not meeting until Wednesday then. There you go. Oh. Okay. Um, great. Do I need to make a motion to set those dates? That would be great. Okay. So we'll make a a motion to uh, officially set our our review and shortlist date meeting as June second, and then uh, interviews with the shortlisted candidates on June uh, June fourteenth and June sixteenth. So I moved. I have a second. Second. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. I think it's unanimous, Blythe. Awesome. Very good. All right. Next item, please discuss process to manage payment and project costs and financial reporting. So the reason I asked Kevin if we could put this on the agenda is what just wanted to make sure that we start out with giving everybody the level of information that you want and the approval process once we start to spend money. I mean, we have started to spend money. Um, I authorized Matt to spend $550 to uh, put the project doc, the OPM information up on Project Dog, um, which he did. But you know, before we get too far into it, uh, we can handle this a couple of ways. Um, we can uh, mostly most conservative would be to have the committee approve all of the invoices whenever when they come in each time the committee meets. Um, the pros about that is everyone's involved and knows and sees all the paperwork and approves them all. The downside to that is that um, most contracts and most, most vendors expect to be paid within 30 days. So if we only meet once a month, there are times when we'll take, you know, if we don't get to turn in until as much as 30 days later, we might be late with things, which is a challenge. Um, we could take um, the, the, com the complete opposite end of that is staff approves all the payments that come in and simply reports them to you every month and says, here's where the project is. We had um, $50,000 in the OPM line item for that work, the fees in the first phase. We've spent you know, 15, there's, there's 35 left, and you're simply being tracking it on, you know, on a macro level. 
And then in between there, perhaps there's a hybrid where um, there's certain ones that the committee wants to see and sign off on. And there's some like project dog or something minimal like that where you might authorize the staff, myself or Matt to um, sign off and just approve small bills and, and give that information to you as part of the reporting. So I wanted to start, didn't, not looking for a decision tonight, just looking for conversations so we can figure out what's gonna work for everybody as we move forward. I like the hybrid version yeah. where we come up, the committee comes up with a number, say, I don't know, $5,000 and anything under 5,000 is staff review. Anything over is say maybe the clerk or the chair or something like that. Um, or maybe, or maybe we even go, you know, five thousand to ten thousand as clerk or chair, and then above ten thousand is the committee. I, I, I'm just making up numbers. But. I'm glad you suggested that because, um, <clears throat> like right now with the select board, they one of them once a week has to come in and sign the warrant so we can pay all the other towns' bills that departments and boards turn in, but they don't all have to review them. At least one one of the persons looking them over. And I'm I'm glad you mentioned that because I forgot to. Uh. Can I make a suggestion? I would think at the, um, at this stage of the game, I wouldn't necessarily think it would need to be a committee vote because you're going to have a approved budget that, and they're going to work from the budget. Obviously, during construction, when they start putting in uh, AIA requisitions, that would be a committee vote where th that's where the, the large amounts of money you're going to put. On top of the committee meeting monthly, we also usually take a typical of two weeks to process, uh, go through our town warrant. So a lot of these contracts, we would, if we, you know, we're, it's going to be known up front. And once we have um, a job underway, we have a building contract where, you, where the money starts getting messy is when you start doing change orders or, or whatnot, where that definitely should have a, a larger review on it. But I, I would highly suggest at this stage of the game where it's just going to be OPM and designer, where it's, it's not going to be construction. So it should be straightforward and to streamline it so we can get everybody paid. Uh, I would recommend letting setting up maximum budget and giving monthly updates. Yeah, I, I guess I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other. Um, I think I, I can see Matt's point that it would streamline it and just start working against a budget. I mean, can I guess can we change approaches if we feel like it's not working? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and as far as, I mean, we're, we're well off from construction, but, you know, the meeting time that we have now, the second Monday of every month might actually work out pretty well because we would hopefully get that pay rec the end of the month, you know, so we would have gotten it, you know, April 30th, give us time, and then we approve it, you know, on that second Monday. I also have a I have a, a thought process that I think would really streamline the project. Um, I'm sure you guys in the industry have heard of it. It's called Procore. It's a, a, it's a product management software. Mm -hmm. I've already received a quote on it. it basically, you you force every single person that's involved with the project from the OPM, the architect, to the town, to the building committee, to the general contractor. Everything has to be ran through that. And you can set different levels of authorization who can see what. Um, but then it would be a, a very... It wouldn't be an email overload, but it would be, uh, depending on how it would be set up, you, you could check in the project at any single time. And it would be like, basically, it's it's a go-to for everything on the project, which would make life very easy to manage and keep an eye on the project. Um, there is a cost associated with that. They uh, I went back and forth with them. They want basically, I think it's $6,800 a year um, to hold a service like that for us. But during construction, the industry, that's how uh, most general contractors end up charging municipalities to use software like that. So we're gonna pay for it one way or the other, but if we were to look into doing something towards the beginning, once we they get the designer on board and run everything through there, everybody can see it. So it'd be a very live, crystal clear ball of what's going on, which I think would really help the project go smoothly and help everybody understand what, what's happening in, at a live time. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't know if we would need to purchase Procore, Matt, because I mean, a lot of times I think either the designer or the contractor might even use 
program. But they, they that, that's factored back into their price and therefore, and then they own the program, which we would own it and all the documents afterwards and has unlimited users. It, they're going to charge us for it if, if, I mean, somehow it gets paid for. So there's no markup if we do it ourselves. Just that's my two cents of what I think definitely help out make this streamlined. You have to buy it for every project you do, or do you have a no, license? You, no, basically you do it off a, an annual, an annual construction cost. So I told them we'd be doing a project probably over the next three years, and the lowest they'll basically uh, it's a it's an annual subscription. Once it's on there, you own the document. So if you decide to cancel it after, say, this project is done. Uh, you own all the documentation, um, but it it it's great for everything because it, it'll show any single. It's it's amazing. I love you guys to actually review it. I had a an hour long demo on it, and I think it would uh, from my experiences with running projects, and um, I think it would super make. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. I think it would make everybody's life uh, much easier to see what's going on, and it would be again it would be live time depending on authorization le levels of what's happening. And it would show you every single aspect of the job, which again, is clarity for everybody to see and transparency. Um, but I yes, it, I was it, ask you, Matt, is it, it sounds like it'll make the, make the transparency piece of this, you know, everybody will have access to it and be able to see it. And I think yeah. that's a good thing. And, and you, again, you can set authorization levels. So the general public doesn't need to see all the back and forth between the OPM and the town or whatever. Um, or, but you can see, you can share exactly what you want to share and hold back. And again, um, if, and you can make that as part of a contract is that they're going to use this platform, uh, for, um, all communications and all, you know, logs and everything. And, and it's, it's us standardized. So you're not trying to figure out what XYZ company is trying to show you on, you know, everybody has different reporting, which this would be a universal report. So it streamline your viewing and. I think it would be a, a, a it not necessarily has to be done soon, but I think it would be a very helpful tool. And yes, the architect or the OPM or the uh, general contractor will probably provide it, but we will pay a markup on it and it won't be ours. Um, have, have any of you used that before? Or have any experience with it? Okay. Yeah. My, myself as well. And, you know, I, every time I've used it, it has been provided by the architect, but it is a, you know, in my opinion, a substantial uh, gain in, um, I guess, you know, the ease of, of running the project, you know, you, any kind of a process that needs to go to a certain person, it's easy. It just checks off who, you know, who, who needs to respond to it. Who's, whose court the ball is in and they get an email and it just kind of keeps everything running like clockwork. Yeah. I mean, I've, we've used it quite a bit on, yeah. on projects, but, yeah, I've, I've actually, I've never seen the owner be the operator of it before. So I have to think about that a little bit. Yeah, I think I've, I've used it on, on three projects within the last five years or so. And each of those times, it's been the architect. And it, I'm not against the architect doing it. I'm just trying to make it so it's as most cost effective. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's also tailored to what we want instead of what the architect wants. So, because whoever owns it has the authority levels. So that's my only two cents. So you're not I'm just trying to bypass a, a markup, but um, it truly doesn't matter. I, just, I think that would definitely help out the project be as transparent and uh, keep everybody on the same page as humanly possible. A couple of thoughts from my end. Um, it, it's a pretty good program. I, there's many competitors. Um, the owner owning it is an interesting idea uh because i always find it awkward for the transition between the architect and the contractor at construction the, the end of design and the start of construction is always a bit awkward and a lot of the programs i have we end up with a design site and a construction site and once you get into construction you lose the history of the design project if you switch um which isn't always great Maybe what we have here is the benefit of the OPM. I mean, maybe the OPM can own it and manage it. Um, and it, it for a lot of our projects, as the architect, it, we, it's a reimbursable expense to us back to the client. So, um, and I'm not sure, Matt and Blythe, but it might be worth seeing where we're headed for our contract. But my guess is our contract with the architect 
is going to say that we own the documents that they produce, regardless of whether they're hard copies or electronic or where they're stored. So uh, it might be worth clarifying ownership of documents and project information. But um, my guess is, is that ultimately it doesn't matter who owns the license for the project management software in terms of who actually owns the documents that's in it. Um, but that's a long rambling way of saying, I think ideally in our position here, maybe the OPM takes up management of our electronic storage. Gone. So I, I guess back to the original question, Blythe. Um, I guess I'm not sure what sort of expenses we're going to occur over the next few months. I, I, I'm certain if, if everyone wants to do, you know, that there's a small amount or, you know, $1,000 to $5,000, whatever amount we come up with that, you know, the chair clerk needs to, to sign. I, I, I don't have an issue with that. I only work 10 minutes from the center. Of so, I mean, I can come up to, to sign something if, if need be fairly readily. But um, yeah, I think starting out with something like that would be helpful. Um, and, you know, regardless, you know, whatever, I mean, there are not going to be many expenses to start with until we've hired the OPM and they were actually paying for, them for their work that they've done. Um, so I would be, I'd be fine with it if, if I could uh, approve something up to, with Matt's you know, help or the chiefs up to, yeah, if I say 5,000 and then you as a chair approve everything else and then maybe it's get to the point where the committee wants to be involved in all the payments to the architect or the contractor or whatever, we can add that layer. Yeah, I, I think once we start getting into, into bigger payments, it's probably what we're gonna to wanna to bring into the whole committee for approval would be, be my guess. But if it's smaller amounts until then, we can just handle it that way. Okay. So we, need, it's nothing we, need we need to vote on. We just uh, wanted to get the conversation going and make sure everyone's comfortable. Okay. So we'll officially vote on it next meeting or does it not really need a vote? I don't think it needs a vote. Uh, just like I said, I want to start out with everyone feeling like they're, you know, everyone knows what's going on and, and has the amount of information that they want. We can, we can give you copies of everything we approve till you say, uncle, I've seen enough paper. I don't want to see any more invoices for stamps. <laughs> whatever well, it is. Well, I think if, if we move through this and we say, you know what, we need to raise this to 10,000, 5,000 is too cumbersome. I'm coming up there every week to sign something, then we can kind of change as we go. But, so, okay. Cool. That's great. All right. Uh, next item, please consider approval of the minutes. Um, Usually the uh, clerk gets. Yeah. Um, Makes the motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, the minutes. So moved. Of, oh, seconded. Sorry. Of the, of the April 12th meeting. Ah, yes. Seconded. Oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Still getting used to it. Sorry. <laughs> and technically, okay. that's a, technically, that's the chair's job. Oh, sorry, <laughs> chair. <laughs> I have to ask for the aye, even though he asked for the motion. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All those in favor say Chairs aye. in charge. Chairs in All charge. Right. All those All right. in favor say aye. 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 All right. Now we're legit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get it down in a year or so. <laughs> Great. Okay. I think that's everything we had tonight. Yep. So the next meeting would be on um, June 2nd to review the proposals. I'll send every, I'll work on the, um, the chart and send out to everyone. Um, you'll get the uh, electronic information from Matt on the 25th, as soon as it, it, you get it. Those, oh, everything needs to be turned in by I think 11 o'clock that day. So I expect you to receive it sometime in the afternoon. Okay. We, so we agreed on June 14th and 16th for the OPM interviews. Yes. Yeah. 
All right. Motion to adjourn. Yeah, I was going to ask if anyone had anything else. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll motion to adjourn. I moved. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. I think it's unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming, Thank John. In a month. Yep. Happy to be Sounds yep. good. Have a good night. Thank you. Night. Bye. Bye.